Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today, I'm really excited because I have Vuk Vukoslav, <laughs> Vukoslavlin, I can't say it. Nice. Say it for me, Vuk. Uh, Vukashin Vukoslavljevic. Yes, who is the VP of Marketing at Skillful Communications. Uh, today, we're talking about content across the funnel for organic growth. How's it going, Vuk? You're hanging going, out in Greece yeah. right now. It's going pretty well, yeah. Greece is uh, Greece is always nice, especially Thessaloniki. I consider this my uh, second city, or maybe third. But oh, really, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate the invite. Oh yeah, I'm super excited to have you. We've been chatting now for a little while, uh, and you have so many cool stories to share. So I'm really excited to get into this. Um, Vuk, you were head of growth at Lemlist for a while, which grew to 10 million ARR in three and a half years. Uh, and from what you told me, this was largely organic growth through content, or a, lot, a big part of it was. Yeah, correct. Correct. I think uh, the organic channels, the inbound organic channels were the most successful for, for Lemlist, historically speaking. I think... SEO stuff, we could have done, I mean, it was working, but we could have done a, a better job. Should we have like a good SEO person in the team? But uh, organic was was key for Lamlist and it was a, a fascinating story. I've been there for almost four, four years and uh, it's been a hell of a lot of fun. So shout out to the, the entire team there. Yeah, it's been amazing to watch Lemlist grow. I remember I started following them a few years ago as well. Um, and it's just one of the most impressive <laughs> growths I've seen for SaaS lately. So I'm really excited to be able to talk about that and just your experience there. So I thought it would be interesting because you have a different strategy for every part of the funnel, uh, bottom of the funnel, middle funnel, top funnel, and you had different kind of content, you leveraged different communities or approaches. So I thought it would be interesting today to just go through each of the final steps and and talk about some strategies or tactics that you use there and see how we could learn from that. Sound good? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Nice. I always like to start at the bottom of the funnel uh, rather than the top. So let's start there. Uh, what What were your biggest levers that you pulled or content plays at the bottom of the funnel? Uh, yeah, it depends. I guess the answer to that uh, will depend on the year that we're speaking about. So if it's like 2019 Lemlist, bottom of the funnel was pretty similar to the middle of the funnel. We we were a smaller team. We, we needed to shift our resources to a couple of things that we could do. And normally these were always called email templates. And I guess the way we distributed uh, that content was a little bit different at the bottom, but once we got a handle on things and we increased the team, then the bottom of the funnel becomes what you do uh, in app, uh, what you do with things like retention, what you do with things like converting free trial users to uh, paid users, but by giving them value. And then, you know, Lemnus later on, it didn't, it wasn't just a cold email outreach tool. It became like a multi-channel tool. And then mm -hmm. the content layers also flourish. So now you're not only speaking about cold email, you're also speaking about LinkedIn. You're also speaking about outreach on LinkedIn, building a personal brand on LinkedIn and how all these pieces fall together um, f uh, to, you know, accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. But typically for us, the bottom of the funnel could be any webinar, could be any in-depth story around a successful campaign and then breaking it down to the smallest of details so that any user uh, and prospect, if they are together on the webinar, they can still benefit from it. Typically, we we loved webinars and we started to leverage this um, I, like uh, in, the, in the community where we were having like a really specific topic. So I remember doing one on the icebreakers and how you start the email and how you transition from the icebreaker to the, um, to the pitch, which was typically the two things that people uh, face challenges with. So what's my opener opening line? Like how mm -hmm. I'm going to 
tiramisu that you're talking about and uh, the the second one was the transition because you know sometimes i can say you know hey your seo work has been brilliant and then you switch do you want to use my tool and this is maybe you know not that natural and so how do you transition and how do you connect the icebreaker with the pitch and when we do the webinar around that then the conversation is not about width we're not talking about subject line we're not talking about follow-ups or what have you we're talking about only this and we can analyze different things we can use different examples so what if if i'm selling a product versus what if i'm selling something else uh, there's a lot of q a and i think these webinars started to receive great feedback and then this webinar can then be repurposed as a youtube video can be repurposed in a blog article so for me bottom of the funnel is is that type of a content along with uh, potentially uh you know you can even pack it into a case study but there's always like a question is this like middle of the funnel or bottom of the funnel and your business model will dictate it a bit but for me this is how i saw bottom of the funnel this is one of the examples that we that we did it's interesting because this kind of stuff helping people who are doing cold email outreach or are doing linkedin outreach or the kind of things that you help them with it's still, to me, it sounds like middle of the funnel because it is ICP. They are doing these things, but I don't know if they're looking for a solution or to switch solutions right now. So how did you differentiate bottom to middle? Uh, in, in this webinar sense, I, I think we weren't, I'm, like, I weren't that obsessed whether this was one or the other or whether i'm gonna have more prospects versus mm -hmm. more users we were only advertising these events in the community maybe in the newsletter for some but most of them were only for community and then if a user invited another user to join uh that's not part of the community that was still fine but we did because we had like a robust community okay. we were using it this way but you know it can be a lot of different things like for instance for example guillaume the, uh, built two master classes so called email master class and the linkedin master class and at some point in time, one of my one of the marketing team's quarterly goals was, can we in increase the amount of annual plans? And so we started giving masterclasses for free to any user who would sign, who would buy an annual plan. So for me, the masterclass then became a bottom of the funnel, kind of, because mm -hmm. it was educating uh, if you bought, uh, like if you bought the multi-channel plan, the sales engagement plan, you would get both masterclasses for free. And one will teach you about the cold email stuff. The, the other one will teach you about LinkedIn. It was super in-depth. Like, I know that, I mean, I, we, we built this content together and it was super, super detailed and, and everything. And it was in, in a service of helping people win with outreach. So it was a beautiful bottom of the funnel, uh, bottom, of the con uh, bottom of the funnel content that we started using. Um, and it was uh, pretty good. I think, you know, the number of annual plans increased. Uh, overall feedback on that content was well and the difference maybe the difference between the two whether this is maybe it's a co-share you know it can be middle of the funnel it can be bottom of the funnel depending on when the customer hits it so yeah you know and there's a bunch of product marketing stuff that you do maybe in app there's a fun project that we did around that as well but typically you know how you label it is less important compared to how it performs right so mm -hmm. True. That's not so you mentioned two things that I want to touch on. One, yeah. you said bottom of the funnel is in app. So actual, what is that onboarding or the way that they're using the product and how does, how is that connected to content? Yeah. So for instance, imagine if, you know, we launched a new lead gen agency features back in October past year for the first time. And so it wasn't a big launch. So we started with beta first. And then the content that gets distributed was tailored around their needs. And then you had various types of agencies. What if it's an agency that's already using Lamlist versus an agency that's just coming in? Mm -hmm. And so the content that you send them, how you onboard them, how you help them accomplish a couple of things um, was really key for them to adapt to, to new features. And sometimes, you know, you develop, you, you have a feature that you need the supporting content uh, to make it work. Sometimes yeah. it's not as easy. 
So this is one of the pieces of product marketing content that 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 you really need, and it can be for any 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 different user segment within your group. So it's not only onboarding; it's also retention. It's also when you launch, uh, when you launch a feature. Like I still I still think maybe not not super connected with with this one, but Figma, for instance, I'm obsessed with their community led growth model and how they whenever they were building features before Figma became Figma. They were inviting, uh, they created like a game, draw something funny. You know, we're going to draw a house or a sun using the new features. You and I as two designers and maybe a third designer are on a call together with the Figma person. And we're designing as we go, talking and having fun while the person from Figma sees it. For me, this is, this is it. This is how people yeah. use, like not everything is as easy as ordering an Uber ride. So you need well thought out content to help them win it's not about selling the feature it's about selling what this feature does and how do you do that goes beyond just a normal help center sometimes it's a you know what i mean yeah no i love that you have this focus on retention because it's customer-led growth at the end of the day and it's a little less of a funnel and more of the flywheel in that case yeah, and it can be anything. Like if 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 I if we don't have time, for example, I, I remember like at one point video team and video team at Lamlist is huge. Like video team is bigger than sales team. Uh, video team was packed with video work. And so for me to add another playlist to their uh, workload was too much. And so I would just fire up Loom and record yeah. videos with Loom, organize them in lists. I would prepare uh, that content up front so it's not like, 100% improvised video. There's like some thinking process behind it. And then this video will be served one for prospects, the other one for users, how to start using agency features and the content that's not, it's like a black swan content. It's not the prettiest, but it does the job. And then yeah, it's useful. One, yeah, it's once the beta finishes, you take all the feedback and you convert that you know, feed, uh, content that you created before into something even better now with feedback. And, it can be many different forms and ways. As long as it brings value to people, that's 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 all mm-hmm. I ever care. So you also mentioned something else uh, when you were differentiating bottom to middle of the funnel, and you said the content could be the same, but actually one big difference is how you distribute it. So what's the different ways that you would distribute in those steps? Uh, you mean still 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 being at the bottom? But let's talk about both. Let's start with the bottom and then how do you, would you distribute the middle? Yeah. So it de- I guess it depends because if you have a product that has users, so for instance, we had uh, 1500 free trial users a week at Lamlist. So that's already really nice number and you have a lot of users going into the app. So how you distribute stuff in the app can be fun. And I'll just give you a, a comparison. Like uh, from October, once we launched the lead gen agency features in October, uh, we were advertising the beta only in the community and in the newsletter, nowhere else. And this was Q4 2021. And we had a significant, I mean, I, I think I shared this a couple of times, but uh, there was a certain number of leads that came in. So only new uh, prospective clients. Then... I worked together with one developer, Julian and Adrian, the, at the design at Lamlist, and shout out to both both of them. Uh, we built this in-app homepage where we position different things, among others, the lead gen stuff. And because you have so many free trial users who are still not paid users, you're also battling for conversions. Mm-hmm. And just in January, that in-app homepage brought more leads than the entire Q4 of community newsletter. And so if anybody has a tough like uh, challenge to convince somebody that product marketing is good, producing a stat like that tells you, yeah. hey, like we have we have a really good opportunity here to communicate with users. And so this is one of the ways that you can potentially find ways how you distribute stuff. So this wasn't distributing content, this was distributing new features, but the dynamic and the logic is the same. And at the bottom, obviously, you have the emails, you have different ways that you communicate with uh, with users. It's just important for you to deliver the right message at the right time. That's maybe mm-hmm. the, the thing with distribution. So if, if, if they just started testing lead gen 
uh, agency features, what content I distribute at what time is maybe something that's worth yeah. having a discussion on. But as for the others, like I always try to crack organic, like SEO. Uh, I don't think I ever cracked it to the level of having hundred thousands of visits, but uh, I've seen some increased patterns after figuring out a couple of things uh, along the way. Uh, building a community from day one, even before I joined and I was a first employee there, like they started building this community before they launched the first version, the MVP of Lemlist on Product Hunt. So the community became like a distribution framework that was a beautiful move that, that they envisioned. And uh, it's like, you know, when you're hosting a party at your place, everybody wants to talk yeah. to you. It's just the way that community works. And then that community evolved over time into just not being something about talking about the product, uh, but also talking about sales, outreach, etc. And then it, you can't really distribute every single article you produce in the community. That's spam of you know, the worst kind. But if you figure out a way that in this article you talked about this and then you take, take a piece of it and repurpose it natively in the community through a conversation or maybe it becomes a user-generated content that somebody will ask about, that's another way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the final piece of it is, uh, you know, you have the optimization for organic, but you also have optimization for producing value. And then this value kind of guilts people, if that's the right coin, uh, to share that article forward. Because if you produce value, if I, if I create something good, you might say, hey, my good friend Sarah will benefit from reading this article and she might share it. And that's, those are the main, those, those were the main, I guess, uh, ways we distributed, uh, our content along with some mini things, you know, like a newsletter every week and things like that. But, uh, uh, these were the key, key moves, uh, for us. So you had, for example, one piece of content that you would distribute that same piece of content in the group, you would ask people to share it, you would send it in the newsletter, and you would put it somewhere on the website, like a banner on the website in the app? Yep, exactly. Uh, but I wouldn't always ask to share. Like sometimes if the article okay. is good, I feel like it, they, they're going to share it otherwise. And I forgot to mention LinkedIn. LinkedIn was was, was LinkedIn. critical for, for Lamlist in, in really? so many ways. Yeah, yeah. without LinkedIn, Lamlist is not the company that it is. It's just fact. Like take a look at not just Guillaume, but take a look at, for instance, Nadja, head of sales. Take a look at yeah. Rocks, who leads social media um, in the company. Like a lot of that content comes, you know, it's connected with their own personal brand. But sometimes Nadja's head of sales can break down a template and can repurpose again. It's just the key to repurpose that content natively to the platform at hand. And so repurposing content, you don't have to think about, you already have what 300 templates on that blog there's 300 posts in there you just have to you can't yeah. just copy paste you can't embed a link that's sloppy work but if you change it adapt it make it uh, in, into a cool linkedin post then that's a great way of distributing and on the flip side you can also what uh, justin welsh preaches you can pick five micro uh, micro influencers in your industry and interact with their posts be the first one to yeah. leave the comment be the first one to leave a genuine comment. And then through these conversations, not only are you growing your brand, but there's also opens you an opportunity. Hey, you talked about these cold email templates. Can you share the resource? And people will ask you. So you're not the one asking, hey, check out my article. People are actually asking for it. So there's a lot of, lot of that as well. But it's like short-term and long-term plays that when you do them together, they give you a really nice effect over time but yeah. it can't happen after a month. That's why you have different things. You have a little bit of a community, you have a little bit of a newsletter, you have a little bit of LinkedIn, now you have the fucking TikTok. You have plenty of things to choose from. Uh, I, we naturally moved into top of the funnel, I think. Uh, and I find it very interesting how you're talking about changing the content piece. You create like one pillar page and then you it's sloppy work to just post it on LinkedIn and say, Hey, look at my, our new blog post. Right. Um, so how are you adapting? Let's say you've created one amazing piece. What's the process for adapting it to each of the channels and 
what channel are you thinking about when you first create the piece? Honestly, the, it, like this, this became like a free flow uh, kind of a drill at Lambda's because people that work in this company, most of them, especially sales and marketing, they already have a healthy obsession towards social, especially LinkedIn. So you don't have to convince them to build a personal brand. You just have to tell them, hey, we built this piece of content. Or you sometimes ask them, you know, in your LinkedIn, what kind of content do you feel we should create next? And then anybody from sales will tell, we create it, we just tell them, and then they take over the job. Even if, if I was like a social media manager running LinkedIn for you, I don't want I like me to be writing your posts. I would rather have you write something and then I could optimize that because there's okay. the beauty in authenticity in having this voice. The way I do humor is completely different. Like I was writing, uh, like Guillaume and I had like uh, so many laughs about this. Like in the early days, I was writing the newsletter uh, from his name. And sometimes you can tell it's a, it's a joke yeah. from another person. And anybody who was using Lamlist for a long time, they started seeing the difference because we have our similarities, but we have our differences. And that was one of the ways that we understood that, okay, it's fine for the newsletter. It's no biggie, but you can't really do that for LinkedIn. And imagine, no. you know, rocks writing posts for me or me writing posts for rocks, yeah. different, per, different, different types of people. And uh, that's maybe the key. So I, to, to go back to your question, I guess people will just take the article. Uh, if it's like a salesperson, they would go to the ones that are most actionable and then they would adapt those long paragraphs into something that's native, like a, a, you okay. know, a catchy trailer, a catchy intro that pushes you to click see more and stop from scrolling. Then in the middle, it's advice. And then sometimes they'll give you everything you need in that post. Sometimes there's going to be a link to the ebook about Kodima okay. templates. You like this template? You want to see more? go to the ebook yeah. and then they test different things, how they post, what kind of language they use, and they optimize stuff from there. And when we launched the ebook, for instance, everybody had a mission. Uh, like we just had told people on this date, post the ebook. Here are the couple of posts for inspiration, but you know, you do you. Like if you don't, if you want to change it, if you want to start building from scratch, totally do you. And most of the people did that. Nobody just copy pasted the exact inspiration. Yeah. They use maybe a couple of things to create the post better, but that's that that's the beauty of it. Like this, this for me is perfect distribution. Like applying a little work if you're building your personal brand. This is the way we 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 did it, uh, and you know I guess it's it's still the case. Did you do this for every piece of content? No, no, no. I think like as, as, as every case with the blog, like uh, not all articles are created equal. Uh, and sometimes uh, some article will not produce the desired results as, as some other, like uh, typically for LinkedIn, the articles that, that, that worked best were the ones that were breaking down a successful campaign. If we're talking okay. about an article that's, uh, I don't know, talking about the funnel or something a bit more, Theoretic, this could become a post inspiration, but not uh, as much as templates. And if you take a look at the Lambda's blog, most of the content that we did were templates, always. Yeah. Because they performed the best. This was the first content that we started creating and it never stopped. We just found a way to uh, always be creative, have new examples, don't recycle stuff a lot. We figured out a way how to turn the testimonials into something that's fun, middle of the content, and then this produce additional sharing and user-generated stuff. So templates were always key and uh, most of the templates get shared. But there's no, like, you don't have to share every single article on the flip side. Like, it's not that yeah. big of a deal. If in one article doesn't produce that amount of traffic from LinkedIn, who cares? It's not the yeah. end of the world. Well, Vuk, this has been very fun. Thank you for sharing your story with me, with us. Where's the best place for somebody to connect with you if they want to talk to you more? Uh, send me a postcard. No, just, uh, just <laughs> Okay, <laughs> what's your address? <laughs> I'll give the Thessaloniki one to surprise some of 
No, no, but LinkedIn uh, for sure, book at biginterview.com. Like I'm everywhere, but LinkedIn and email are the safest bets. I try to okay. I try to keep a clean inbox. All right. Uh, if so, if whoever's listening or watching this episode, if you enjoyed it, as always, give it a like, leave a comment, let us know, uh, and go say hi to Vuk. And uh, thanks so much for your time. No, thanks See for the you. invite. It was blessed. See ya. And that's the end of the podcast right there. Hope you enjoyed the episode, but please don't go just yet. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people like you discover us and get the same insights, and it would really help us out a lot. Um, thank you for being a loyal flying cat and for listening. See you next time.